Hi again then guys and welcome to another installment of Beards and Cars, the podcast series here on the channel of course where we talk about a wide variety of topics, uh, could be debates sometimes, could be countdowns, we have guests of course and we will be having more of those episodes as well in future but for those who do like listening to these episodes in their more podcast form, the audio only side of things, you can slap the link down below, go over to the SoundCloud page and you know listen to it later, save it, whatever you want to do but for now at least the YouTube version is, for obvious reasons, more beneficial for the channel. Now, this topic is one that I've had more and more messages and comments and requests about discussing in recent months in particular. And I can't really say I'm surprised by that, because this is something which myself I have been thinking about as well, and that is, what is happening to those beloved original circuits, the polyphony digital fictional racetracks that we all know and love, especially those who've been playing Gran Turismo for a long time. What's happening to those? Where have they gone? Why aren't they coming back? And will they come back? It's a very loaded question, and it's all over the place in terms of what you could choose to discuss, but I just wanted to hit on some of the main points and main main ideas, basically, that I have regarding that, in terms of why I think we don't see as many of those coming in GT Sport already, currently, maybe even for the future as well, why I think they're doing that, the reasoning behind it, but also, of course, whether there's a possibility for some of those OG circuits to come back in the future, maybe in GT Sport, but maybe in GT7, a more conventional game, for instance, which we'll just call GT7 for the sake of it at the moment. Now, the reason why I think we do not see as many of those fictional circuits either debuting or returning in GT Sport compared to what you might hope it's very simple. It's the esports. It's the FIA stuff, as far as I'm concerned. And although, of course, I could be wrong, my reasoning on this is actually fairly simple. And that is that, as I've said before, they are really pushing to try and make those events taken very seriously. Not by gamers. You don't need gamers to be won over. We already are. They're trying to make the people who aren't already in the family, such as the FIA people, maybe potential sponsors like Michelin and others, they need them to take this sphere that we are moving into with Gran Turismo and even with other games as well, like Forza doing esports as well and, and other franchises too. They need it to be taken seriously for it to get better, for it to have more opportunities in terms of business, not just, you know, the fun of racing. And having more real world circuits just makes more sense. It really is as simple as that. If you can say to those, you know, FIA people, those potential sponsors who could not care less about a racing game, to them it's all business. If you can say to them, well, we've got real people racing in real cars on real circuits, well, that is, of course, going to look and sound more professional than if you say we've got a bunch of kids racing in 400 mile per hour tomahawks on complex string. They don't know what the the relevance of a track like that is for those of us. They don't care about nostalgia unless that nostalgia sells tickets. And at the end of the day, it seems less professional. And of course, that's to do with the car as well, the Tomahawk that I mentioned. But even as far as the Red Bull, just look at what they did with the 2019. It's a much, much more pared back car. Back in the day, the most extreme thing about the Red Bull was the performance. Now the most extreme thing about the Red Bull is just the looks. The performance is actually pretty mediocre compared to what it used to be. It's more like a, a closed canopy Formula One car, in effect, and sometimes the Formula car can even beat it. So, again, they're clearly trying to make it a vehicle that you can take more seriously, something that's not ridiculously over the top. And in the next game, for instance, it would not surprise me at all if the Tomahawks, for instance, got neutered in terms of performance. In fact, they already are, compared to how fast they were in GT6, they're already slower now. So it's not really surprising to me that they are focusing more on these real tracks, like your Lassartes, Nürburgrings, Spa, I'm hoping for Laguna Seca in this game at some point, more so, in terms of focus, than stuff like Midfield, Complex String. Seattle, New York even, there are some tracks that have real-world locations, but they're fictional twists on those locations. That doesn't surprise me in the slightest. And I think, honestly, that that is the reason why. Now, that brings us to an interesting question as to if, and it's a, it's a big if, for sure, you know, I don't have evidence as such for that, it's just reasoning based on what I've seen in the game. If that is the case, what does that mean, or what could that mean for the future? in terms of predictions, will we ever see 
those beloved tracks, you know, like your midfields, your Grindenwalds, various others, could they come back? Or is that now outdated? Well, I'm going to say yes and no. I think that for GT Sport, probably not. I think that some fictional circuits will debut. Some already have, even. And I think that some might return. I think, for instance, that midfield has a decent chance. However, I think that if you're really putting all of your love and hope into those OG circuits coming back, fictional tracks, if that's really your thing, I think the next game, if it does turn out to be more of a a traditional Gran Turismo title, a GT7, let's say, I think that that's the kind of game that you could expect to see more of those circuits in. Now, as I said, I do not believe that they'll have no more original circuits, because that would be ridiculous to say, because we've already had original tracks. We've got, uh, how do you pronounce it, the the Saint Croix, Saint Croix, however you pronounce that track, a couple of others too. But if you think of the most significant tracks that have come to the game, they're more so stuff like Goodwood where it's a real track, and it is a debut, which is cool, but it's a real circuit. It's a tangible, recognisable name that can easily appeal to those brands who might not take gaming as seriously without some coaxing. Now, another potential topic that you could discuss within this overall conversation, and I would love to hear, of course, your thoughts on this one down below, and I think this will probably be the part of the discussion that you guys have the most thoughts on, because... It's similar to the car situation where everybody knows what kind of vehicles they want to see. You can think of a whole list off the top of your head. As far as tracks, it does make the question of which ones will come back much more interesting. Because if what I have said is correct, in part or in whole, it does present the interesting question of, if that is the case, how does Polyphony decide which ones to bring back? And also, arguably a more curious question... How do they decide which fictional tracks to make and to implement? Because some of the tracks that aren't real, that are in the game, that have been added, for instance, they don't necessarily offer any level of realism in terms of their design that something like Midfield doesn't already. Well, my response to that is, again, a fairly simple one, and I think it's to do with the geography. And that may seem like a weird thing, but what I mean by that is, if you look at the fictional circuits that they've added to GT Sport, especially the ones that have debuted, that have never been in the series before, Sardinia, for instance, others like that, Dragon Trail, they're based around real locations. If you think back to High Speed Ring, Autumn Ring, Midfield, most of those, they're not based anywhere. They're just picked out of thin air fictional tracks that exist in a void of geography. That doesn't help with the realism. It doesn't help with the game being taken seriously. If you think of the ones that we have now, we've got ones in France. We've got ones set in Croatia in the form of Dragon Trail. They are very, very specifically geographically pinpointed, even though they're not real. And that gives it just that little bit more of a realistic edge. The way the tracks are designed feel realistic. If you compare it, for instance, to a high-speed ring, nobody's doing racing on a track that looks like high-speed ring, not since Brooklyn's in the 1920s at least, so of course that track isn't in the game, and it wouldn't surprise me if it never comes back. There are some who you could argue for, like Grand Valley or Midfield, because they have more of a realistic racetrack vibe, but even then, the fact that they are completely devoid of any real-world ties, beyond what we might think of where they could be based, you know, America, Japan, whatever... They're just not tangible enough to be marketed as these, as I said, taken seriously style circuits. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, this entire line of reasoning could well be wrong. But that's the point of a lot of these videos. It's speculation, it's predictions, it's discussing what could be the case, and then seeing based on the existing evidence and also how things pan out, is it true, which parts of it were correct, which parts weren't correct. Looking back, and it also tells you more about the future what things were correct, what does that mean for the future, and it's just an interesting discussion to have. So bringing that back around to the question of which ones could be brought back, which ones would actually suit this idea of, if, again, I'm correct, geographically specific fictional locations, well, interestingly, if that logic were accurate, that would technically give circuits like New York and Seattle the biggest advantage, because they are very intrinsically tied in to these real-world locales. 
Interestingly, the thing that works against that theory, though, is that GT Sport doesn't focus on city tracks really at all that I can think of. It's all GT-style stuff. Interesting, once again, and I hadn't actually thought about that until making this video. How few, if any, city tracks there really are in the game, despite the fact that a lot of the scapes locations are very city-oriented. So if I were to, for instance, predict which fictional, you know, polyphony OG circuits could come back in this specific game, not just the future of the franchise, I would say there are probably two that stand out to me the most. Midfield is one. And the reason why Midfield stands out to me is because it was the most recently updated in the series, coming back in GT6 with that full visual overhaul. That, I think, alone gives it a good chance, because a lot of the cars that had a, an extensive visual overhaul are coming back and have already. Your GTR Nismos, your Clio V6s, your Lancia Deltas, a lot of those super premiums were brought back. So the fact that Midfield is, in effect one of the very few super premium circuits in the game, I think that gives it a pretty good head start over a lot of others like Grand Valley and High Speed Ring and that kind of thing. The other one, though, if I'm going to go out on more of a limb and go a bit crazy with these predictions, I might actually say that another circuit which I think could have a chance of coming back, maybe only in name, maybe the track itself would be different, but maybe keep the name, is Grindenwald. Because again, it's geographical. It has more of that kind of Swiss Alps vibe to it where you can pinpoint an idea of where that would be in the world, what it should look like, what it does look like, and it just gives it again that more serious vibe. Less Mario Kart and more serious racer, if you will. So to me, those are my thoughts on this situation, why we haven't been seeing many of those fan favourites come back. And I will say that looking to the future, I believe that it depends really on how much FIA integration there is in the next game. Because if it's more of a traditional Gran Turismo game, then there's a much higher chance of those fan favourites coming back or being reimagined or reinterpreted. If the next game is more of a GT Sport 2, if you will, then I'd say the, the chances are probably still slim. For now though, they definitely seem to be focusing on more of a mix of real-world tracks and tracks with very specific geographical locations. And that's pretty much it, as far as my thoughts go, based on the current evidence, if you will, in the game, my thoughts on it, my reasoning on it. So, of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What do you think the reason is? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think we will get some of those OG tracks back in the near future? Maybe in the next game? Maybe even some predictions of which ones you think will come back, or just which ones you would like to see come back, of course. But that's it overall for this installment, of course. I will see you guys next time, and if you're not already joining in on the conversation on the official HSG Discord server, you should. There's over 600 of us on there, so you can once again join that for free, of course, by slapping the link down below. So jump over there, get in on the discussion. You can also vote on your favourite cars and unsung heroes and talk about various other things as well. So for now, that's it for this instalment. Of course, I'll see you guys next week, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.